version of very basic features of OTP and how can you use it to connect between different nodes in your network. So this is an extremely basic application that what it does, it just it starts a, it starts a gen server. Gen server is basically a, like a process that keeps some state. So it goes in a loop and every next loop uh, it goes, you can update the state. So here if I do something like generic server, right? I will just make it bigger. Yes, it's called generic server. Yeah. Generic server. Yeah. So, uh, so this, if I do send message, it will add this message that I sent to the list of all messages, right? So it means that it will not provide any reply. I will not get any reply, but the next loop will be run with this state. And when I init it, it gives my uh, it gives okay, and the first state that it starts is an empty list. And then mm -hmm. if I handle a call with the uh, text get messages, it will return all messages. Like this is reply, this is the content of the reply, and this is the last one is the state that it will go with in the next loop. So we can do it. Uh, Okay, so I need to start this server. Start server, start link. Now this is the, 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 the PID of, of this uh, server and I need to pass this PID. So right now, uh, let me assign it to some variable. So now this PID is 0.15.0 and now I can do so server send message. I provide the PID and say OK. And I do server get messages. I need to provide this PID. And I got this message right. So I two and now three. And I've got all these messages here. So that's that's an uh, extremely basic version, but it's also very convenient, right? Because you have to provide this PID, you have to get it uh, and, and pass it around. So now the next version that we will do is um, Get the second comment. Okay. And now what we have is that you see there is a difference here that I provide the name. So I provide the name of this process. It will be called talk. And now when I send message, I provide this talk here. So let's let's see how it will work. So once again I need to start server. And I got the PID, but I do not need it anymore because what I will do it will be just send a message. Okay, so this is uh, this is good. So we already got rid of this PID that we need to pass around. But now the problem that we have is what happens if this process dies. So I can do process where is the name of the process is talk. I've got this process here, and now what I do, I will do process kill, uh, exit kill, and now this process died. So now if I do get messages, I don't have it because that process died. So now the next thing that we can do is, is we can add the supervisor. So this the change at all now, this file didn't change, but what we added here is a supervisor. And the supervisor where, where, where we, when we start it, it starts a process that will be called Talkmaster, and this process will have one worker that will be the server, and it will supervise it with strategy called one for one. Which means that whenever a single process dies, the supervisor will restart that very same process. So let's see how it works here. Uh, So now instead of uh, the gen server, we will start the supervisor. And we got it. It has the, the, the PID here. Now what we will do is stop server send message. And it works. Now we will get messages. It works. Now we will kill the process. Okay, it killed it, and now when we send message, we can send it again. Because the process was 
because we started by, by, by the supervisor. The only problem here is that it contains only one message because when we lost that previous process, we lost everything that it contained, we lost its state. So the solution to that is to use uh, the ETS that Colin showed us that can, can be, when the process that owns the ETS is killed, the ETS, the content can be passed to the supervisor and then the supervisor can give it back to the next, pro next process it starts. Okay, uh, a few more things that show is uh, okay, so I'm going to add the archive module to show you another strategy. Uh, so this archive module, what it will do, it will be containing all the messages, uh, it will contain all the messages that our server contains. So server, when it gets a message, it will just pass it to archive. So if the server dies, uh, server is restarted, but the archive still contains all these messages, right? So, uh, right now our supervisor has both server and archive. Can we have a look at archive? Ah, yeah, sure. It's basically the same as the server. It's like a, yeah. it's like a copy. The, the, only difference is, uh, the only difference is that server passes the message to archive. So the archive, is, it, it's pretty useless, right? It's just another process that keeps the same information. But I just want to use it for, uh, to show this other strategy. So we start supervisor. So I've got this message. And archive gets the same message as server. And now if we kill the uh, process worries, talk. Mm -hmm. So the server died, so server has no messages, archive gets messages because archive uh, survived. And now we will uh, change the strategy to one for all. So the only difference that I introduced here is the strategy. It was one for one, now it's one for all. One for all is that if one process dies, all the processes are restarted. So let's see, let's talk supervisor start. We've got this message. Archive gets this message, now process. And now we killed both of these processes. So if you check now, archive doesn't get any message because it was restarted as well. So if you have a situation where the processes depend on each other and one of them dies and changes its state, you need to restart all the other processes as well, uh, then, then, you will have this, then you will use this strategy. In my case, obviously, it was completely useless because I just remove the archive that is supposed to survive when, when my process dies. Uh, there are two more strategies, but I didn't dig deep into them, so we need to check in the documentation. One is called simple one for one, and the other one, uh, rest for one, or something like this. I do not really remember. The simple one for one is really badly named. Um, e exactly. Yeah, um, and this is something that um, they're going to fix. Um, I think in Elixir 1.3, they're going to mm -hmm. introduce a dynamic uh, supervisor. Mm -hmm. dynamically create new workers within a supervisor. Okay. And that's what a simple one for one actually represents. Okay, so it's not really simplified yeah, version of one for one. Okay, so it's just the wrong thing. Simple one for one is like a special case where you spawn workers as in they are all the same module. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. You just so one for one when they are different Kind modules. of like a pool of workers, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. Exactly. Okay, what I did now in this next commit is I introduced the application. So uh, I've got this, when I created the project, I had this application, let's talk, this module, and it was like this. And now I extend it so that I start this module, and whenever I start the application, whenever I, I enter it, it will just create the supervisor automatically for me. And to do it, I also needed to add it here to the mix file. 
So this mod says, what is the mod module of my application? So I said that the module of my application, it's let's, let's talk. Uh, which means that whenever I start, the, I do the, uh, the command to run mix run, this module will be uh, invo invoked and it will call the method start. So right now, uh, if I do mix, it already started. So I can just do let's talk server send message and it already works i don't need to i don't need to uh, create the supervisor it's done automatically for me so now what i want to show you uh let's see if something else changed here no it's like no everything everything is here stay the same so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh connect two different nodes with each other and to that I will need my last commit which will use global process name. Uh, so uh, just, just to make it clear, so this process here, it's a local process. I cannot find it on another nodes. Even if I connect my nodes in a network, this process it's only available to this single machine because I, log, uh, I register it in like a local registry. So now we will use the, uh, the feature that allows us to use the process, the same single process from various nodes in the network. Ah, shit. Mm. Why? <laughs> what? What? G, ah, yeah, so it's git, yes. Because I call it so often that I just use a single letter. <coughs> okay, now, so I'm, I'm going to use a global process name. So what I do here is when I, when I start my gen server, uh, assign, I have this PID, and now I say that using this global module that also showed us before, I register this, this process ID under the name talk and I'm registering it glo globally, which means that any node that connects to my node will have access to that. And then when I send messages, what I do is I find this, pro this PID and then I pass it to the, to the gen server. And also what I did is that I do not start my application anymore and I will show you, uh, I will explain in a moment why. So what I'm going to do now is I X, and I will call my mod uh, n1. I will use name of cookie, start. Does it work? Yeah, okay. So what I did is I'm calling these, uh, I'm running this application with two parameters. S name means short name, which means that it's the name of my node, short name of my node. And cookie is like, it's kind of like a message that if a few nodes use the same message, they will be able to discover each other. You can think of it as a password, but it's very insecure password because it's passed around in a plain text. So don't think about it as a security. It's most like if you want to have a few networks, then you just use different identifier, right? And here I'm going to do the same. It's name n2. Okay. So here you see I am node n1 at g is the name of my computer. So this is the name of the node and this is the, the name of the, of the host. And now these nodes are not connected to each other. So I've got node.list and it's empty and the same here. Now I need to connect these nodes together. So what I do is node connect and I pass an atom that will be the name of my computer and it returns true. Now we are connected. Uh, and now this process will start, this node will start the supervisor. So, so let's supervisor start link. And now this process can get messages. It's empty, it can send message. And this process can do the same. It can get messages from the other, from the other node. This is just because I'm using this global, global namespace here in my server. But that's, that's, that's why they, they can communicate 
uh, and they can easily find the process in the network. And now, let's say that I'm, what? I'm not really sure if it's UDP or TCP. <laughs> to be honest, I, I have no idea. What, what's cool is that you don't need to know. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Okay, and now if I do, uh, if I use different cookie here, and I call myself fast and free, uh -huh. okay, I start the application, and now I try to connect to node connect, uh, once again it will be n n2 at g and it returns false. So this node, this is n2, it sees that someone tried to connect but it couldn't because it didn't provide the correct, correct identifier, right? So now I can't, obviously, I can't find that process. So it's, let's get messages. I can't find it because I don't have access to that global process. So that global namespace is available to the whole network, but to join the network, you need to know the name, uh, know the name of the host that you want to connect with and the name of this identifier. And yeah, I think that's it. Just wanted to show you that it's extremely easy to connect a few nodes, and you can do the same over, the, over multiple computers. If you've got the local network, then you can do the same just by using either some host name or, or IP. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks. Some more questions? No?